Clean Frontiers. And on our screen, you can see Summa Zaid on here. You will receive a link to view the recording. Please allow us 24 to 48 hours to process the webinar. So I would like to take just a moment to introduce our facilitator. He teaches teams and their managers on scientific thinking, lean and product development. Summa uses Toyota Kata as a scientific thinking pattern to guide his coaching and to evolve the teams. He coaches managers to become coaches for their teams so that they can sufficiently experiment towards various desired outcomes. And it looks like our numbers are still going up, but if you would like to go ahead and take over, you are more than welcome. Sure. Thank you, Skylar. You're very welcome. Thank you for inviting me today. Thanks for Jim. Thank you for Lean Frontiers for providing this opportunity for everyone to learn. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Sam Azid. I coach product teams to daily improve so that they can achieve various business goals. I help the team to incorporate scientific thinking as their way of work. During the current uncertain time, teams need an empowering structure to help them adapt to rapidly changing situations. I'm going to show you today an example of this empowering structure based on scientific thinking. Here is today's agenda. Upon completing this session, I hope you become comfortable to use checklist as a desired operating pattern. By experimenting with this operating pattern, we will generate new knowledge needed to improve our system. One of Gallup's biggest discoveries is the manager alone accounts for 70% of the variance in team engagement. Gallup added that the cost of disengaged employees globally is about $7 trillion or about 10% of the global GDP. Here is the list of references I use for this session. Let's talk a little bit about the aspects of teams working in complex systems. Product team is an example of a typical uh, environment where complexity prevailed. Uh, the problem is that each requirement they receive is unique. And the uh, critical aspect also is that people are non-fungible. So I worked with teams in Europe. You'll find that uh, some of them have 20 years of experience in a very specific technology that there is no many skills available in this technology in the market. And also they have deep expertise in the business or of the organization, deep understanding of the relationship. All of these aspects cannot be easily replicated. And also volatile requirement. Requirement change so often in an unpredictable way because business situation is dynamic. We have the pandemic, which really made the pace of a change much higher. Uh, Atul Gawindi, who is a professor at Harvard Medical School and the chief, uh, chief surgeon, was concerned about the high rate of complication after surgeries and after treatment. Uh, according to him in his book, The Checklist Map, he mentioned that in healthcare, you cannot get better training. People are highly skilled, highly trained. They go to extensive programs, uh, 15 years, or maybe he mentioned maybe 17 years before you become independent as a physician. And despite of all of this training, still we have non-satisfactory results in the outcome of treatment. 
So he said the problem is not the problem of training, really. It's the problem of the complexity inherent in healthcare. So in his book, he mentioned about how he studied different domains. He studied aviation, he studied construction engineering, he studied financial systems and other domains. And he find a common pattern regardless of the domain. And this common pattern, you know, it is a matter of complexity. It's not a matter of individual skills. So he came up with this idea of introducing a checklist uh, for surgeon in the operations room to reduce the number of complications after surgery. According uh, to Atul, that introducing a checklist has introduced discipline, better teamwork, and admit our fallibility. And admitting our fallibility can be so critical for highly experienced people like surgeons, because surgeons, the stakes are high, errors, uh, are really something that needs to be highly controlled. It's life critical. So people start showing new behavior of humility by admitting that what we do now is during the surgery can affect the life of the patient, affect the complication after the treatment. And people start more listening to each other because they need to satisfy the requirements of this checklist. When I work with team, I have this cycle for developing a checklist, which you, for me is a straightforward, straightforward way to set an improvement target for the team. So we analyze the existing data process in a scientific way and use uh, also root cause analysis so that we can prevent the same issue from repeating again. And we create a checklist as a team. No one creates a checklist for us. We create it. Whether this checklist is for design, for specifications, for building, for doing interfaces, we design it. And we use data a lot here. And then do, we do the work for maybe N requests, which usually takes a few weeks, maybe three weeks, four weeks and to collect the data from applying the checklist on each request we are processing. Then afterward, we do reflection and learning. And this reflection and learning can, read, can lead to redesigning the checklist or uh, probably creating new processes. Or maybe we do organizational change because it is about generating knowledge from executing of each of these requests. So we'll come with a modified operating pattern based on what we learned in these few weeks of applying the checklist. Let me show you a challenge uh, of a specific team. And the challenge of this specific team is how might we reduce customer reported issues per quarter to only 10% of the current level. And the time frame here was six months. So if you look at the challenge of this team, it has multiple elements. The first element, it has a metric, which is the percentage of error found in production per quarter. And uh, another element, it's uh, time frame, which is six months. And it's written how might we, we don't know how to achieve this really. So, you know, they analyzed their current value stream and they found they do four basic process steps, design, build, test, accept and deploy, and finally do production support. And in the design phase specifically, they found they need to collaborate with three teams. And this collaboration is based on, I just call it info one, info two, info three for simplicity, but in reality, info one, and Info two and info three, they are, can be uh, this. They can be changes in the system of these 
respective teams, it can be data flows. It is something these uh, respective teams need to implement so we can process the request coming from the customer. So let me talk a little bit about what a target condition means. Uh, Mike Russell uh, wrote a seminal book called the Toyota Kata and the Toyota Kata Practice Guide. And uh, I studied this carefully and he has a nice definition about the target condition. I extracted a piece of it. So I, maybe I give it a few moments to read about it a little bit. For me, when I deal with the target condition, I say to the team, we need to achieve production issues at 10% of the current level. You know what, maybe this is, you cannot do it in one step, you can achieve this. It's good that you analyze your current processes, but maybe you need to come up with an incremental improvement or an interim goal in our way to this distant challenge. Then the team asked me, you know, uh, what kind of an interim goal could be? So as author here, uh, kind of indicate, I gleaned this from him, his book, the overarching goal or challenge comes from manager, but the series of target conditions for getting there are designed by teams. So, it, it comes now for the team to design their target condition. And, uh, you know, they went deeper to analyze the root causes of some of these production issues. So they uh, took 100 production issues. They showed that 80% of the problems are related to design fees, specifically the dependencies on team, team one, team two, and team three for figuring out information that the design needs. Frequently, our team could not glean this information to make the design uh, proper. And so there are assumptions and these assumptions are inaccurate and it caused production issues. Back to the point about what could be the target condition. So I say to the team, you know, you create a checklist and since the design is a problem and it has issues here, Maybe this checklist will address the root cause of these issues. I take this extract from Atul Gawindi's book about the checklist. I would like you maybe to spend a few seconds to read this. When I worked with team, I had similar feedback from them about using checklist really. But uh, after we implemented and studied how the request go, they found there is uh, advantage of it in terms of reducing the time of doing the step because we have now specific requirements of how to do it. Definitely better teamwork because we all have shared understanding about the requirements of doing this process step. It also improved humility because people now understand they need to address the items in the checklist regardless of their uh, technical status or position in the organization. So when we create a checklist, we say why we created, what is the condition which uh, uh, initiated the need to create the checklist. So here, customer reported issues caused by missing information required for complete design, objective reduced design flaws to meet requirements. So for this team, when they analyze the root causes, they find root cause one, root cause two, and root cause three. And the reason I put it red here, because the severity level of root cause two is very high. It's critical, in fact. And they found that issues which are 
because of root cause two, uh, create a high impact in production and they create disruption sometimes and they cannot afford to put in production any software which you could have these issues. However, for root cause one and root cause three, they found it it's medium impact, meaning it can be contained where root cause two, it may not be contained. And they find root cause two happen if either information two or three are missing, then this kind of issues tend to happen. So they need both of these information during the design, information two and information three, to prevent root cause two from happening. So they arrived at the decision, we should not allow having critical production issues, this kind of issues, which are related to root cause two. So they said, you know what? Let us now process the request according to the checklist for the next three weeks. And uh, let's see what we learn from this experience. So they received 10 requests in the next three weeks. And uh, I put here in the red boxes that info two and info three, both of them are critical. So they can process the request. What we found here is you can only process three of these requests because they were able to glean info two and info three for three of these requests. But for the rest of the requests, either info two is missing, both are missing, or info three is missing. So they stopped, simply stopped. They said, we'll not process. Of course, the customer didn't like this because they are not satisfying customer demand by delivering these requests. But they said, we are doing this for the right reason. We cannot afford to have critical issues in production. The cost is prohibitive, very high. So remember when we talked about checklists that it creates a kind of discipline, it's a forcing function, it changes behavior, <clears throat> excuse me, and also, it creates humility, humility, sense of humility, and the better teamwork. They said, you know, info two and info three are simultaneously needed. We need to establish now a modified work relationship with the other teams. And this is a teamwork, improving teamwork aspect of doing this. They came with three alternative solutions. Either they merge team two and three. This is kind of organizational change, can be expensive to do, can take time to be done. Or keep team two and three, team three separate from us, but have a predefined capacity allocated to our team from these two teams. So these two teams can support and provide the information we need and uh, probably also do the designs we need to address the various requests. There was other options, but at the end they said, we'll use option number two, and they came up with this agreement, which will enhance teamwork with team two and team three. And what they figured out when they developed this new relationship with team two and team three, they were able now to figure out this missing information. If you look at this kind of yellow boundary, they were able to get this information by formulating this new relationship. So out of the 10 requests really, they were able now to process eight instead of three because of this modified relationship. And for requirement one and requirement seven, they, they said, we're not going to process them anyway because they require kind of significant changes in some of the systems and uh, the investment is very high. And the customer understood this argument and understood this reasoning that the investment is very high to add, to provide these requests. So it looks to me right now, they are not putting something of 
critical uh, critical issue in production. They have the checklist. It prevented this. They get the information. They had a modified relationship. And this is the kind of discipline which they missed in the first place. So, in fact, this was the team's only first target commission. And the, the story will be continuing for a while. Based on the new working model with team two and team three, our team now established the next target condition is to maintain the checklist for the next three weeks. And it, it's, it is estimated to have uh, 10 more requests in the next three weeks. The outcome matrix is the percentage of the go request. The team collects data to track progress of applying the checklist, which will represent the process matrix. So what happened here when they received the next 10 requests from request 11 to request 20, and they process this daily, they find to their surprise, they can only get info two and info three simultaneously for one of these requests, which caused them to stop processing all of the requests except request four which drastically reduced their throughput to become one out of 10. They didn't know what happened. They thought when they formulated the relationship with the other teams and they use this checklist, things now become more stable. They will be able to process, not, if not all, most of them, 90% of them. And right now they only can process one out of the 10. So, they start thinking about what has happened and they said, you know what, we'll take a kind of system view about that. So what they found here is now our customer can do advanced function because they are not anymore into firefighting mode, the kind of critical issue which have higher impact, which we improved advancing their business practices, created the need for new classes of requirement. So uh, the plus signs means enforcing, the minus signs mean balancing. So what happened here, when our customer can do advanced function, they can more advance their business practice. And by advancing the, their business practice, there is a higher need now for new class of requirements, which Definitely our product capability are not designed for such a new classes of requirements. And since our product capability is falling short with respect to the advanced requirements from the end customer, our ability to satisfy customer requirements comes less, this minus sign. And uh, in, in system thinking, we call this more, what we call it a balancing loop. So we have gains here, which is our customer can do advanced functions, but this were kind of balanced or reduced by uh, our limitation in our product capabilities to provide the ability to do the request to meet these advanced functions. So they realized they reached the limit of their product and the, their product roadmap, they need to think about it, which way beyond the current problems they have. Which is okay. They learned something new. They revealed the new knowledge. And this knowledge wasn't there before. So in doing these steps before we follow these uh, four uh, improvement kata cycles, which we have a direction to get the errors at 10%, we understood the current condition, root causes, what are the critical root causes. We established target condition as a checklist. We processed the requests. We implemented the plan do, do check act cycle 
not in each step, but also when we reach the target condition. But you know what? This will never happen unless the coach becomes the manager and the manager becomes a coach for his team or her team. And this needs to be daily effort to reveal this information. It's a proactive kind of effort that needs to be done daily. According to Gallup, if leaders were to prioritize one action, that leaders equip their manager to become coaches. Without really doing this, this will not happen. And then in Toyota Kata, you'll find the coaching Kata, the coach is involved daily with the learner or the team to ensure this a meta skill or scientific thinking skill, scientific thinking pattern is observed. Stephen Spear wrote a book called The, the High Velocity Edge. I would like to use this uh, small table from the book who is doing comparison between high velocity company and low velocity company. And I talk a lot to Steam about the definition of high velocity. It is not productivity or story points or whatever measure. It's primarily the velocity of solving problems. And the more important, the velocity of revealing problems. And uh, there are very interesting points here. I would like to see point number four. Maybe I give it a few seconds to read it. So solving problem is, is good, but more importantly are the new level of problems will happen because of solving the first one. And this is what pretty much happened for this team. When they solved the problem or they thought they solved the problem by having this new relationship with team two and team three and by having this a checklist, but this is revealed a new kind of problem, which is the limitation of their product. This primarily was very resonating with me because often managers and the leaders look for quick outcomes. However, scientific thinking is about searching for the reality, thinking like a scientist, as Adam Grant mentioned in his book, Think Again and use data and facts. And it's a matter of navigation of the uncertainty zone and learning from there and they make decision based on that. And the right action will take care of itself. So in a nutshell, we are using this cycle all, all over on a daily basis or when, we reach the or when we reach the target condition. So let me summarize quickly what we discussed and what I told you in the beginning. That's what I told you in the beginning. What I didn't tell you is that this only can happen when teams experiment daily while coached by their manager using, uh, I suggest using kata thinking because it's already there and I'm familiar with the material. And, and it's more like a fractal process, whether you have an operating pattern as checklist or I work with team having operating pattern in different things, that's okay. But the idea here is what we do to reach there. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who joined in today. There will be a copy of the recording sent out 24 to 48 hours after today's um, webinar. If you do have any questions right now, um, we can take the next few minutes to go through your questions if you send those over in the chat. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, consider the question. <laughs> I 
I like this kind of question. Yeah, right? Um, I have some suggestion here to Cynthia. I, yeah, let me show you an example, Cynthia, from a team which I coach. Can you see that, Cynthia? Yes, we can see it. Yeah, if you can unmute. Cynthia. Uh, hold on, let me unmute her. Give me one Cynthia, second. Cynthia Christie, I guess. So this team applied the checklist for various requests. It has unique identifier for each request here. And there's a checklist uh, having 43 questions. To your point, yes. The number of questions are many. So based on the request they received, Cynthia, they, you know, they study initially the request, they found, okay, these are the applicable questions to each request. And uh, by doing this, really, this kind of lean mindset here is to do what makes sense. Because requests can be really, the variation is very high. As we said in the beginning, in IT, <coughs> the variation is very high. And, uh, and the variation really, is, it is something we need to live with. If you look here, we found these are the number of applicable questions. What are the applicable questions and how many of them have been answered? They put for themselves a target to have 100% answered question per request because they did a lot of root cause analysis in production. They found many of the issues happening because of this process. And they recorded the start day and the end day of doing this process steps. And they have here the run control chart, if you can see my screen. And they get some knowledge from this. One knowledge is it takes anyway between one and 14 days. You take some knowledge from this. If they are dealing with new objects or an old object, this can be a factor. So old object can be done in faster than new objects that still need to be redesigned. And then right now when they start getting questions about how long it takes, they start now instead of estimation, or estimating the work, sorry, they start looking at this data. And then what they are waiting for now is for these requests because each one of these will go at certain point of production. They will start measuring how many issue happened because of these ones to measure the effectiveness of their solution. It's like what Atul Gawande told us about complications after treatment. The surgery may be successful, but what about the complication after treatment, the whole process? I'm not sure, I'm not sure if that was helpful, Sensei. Yeah, I don't know, I, we've been... Part of my voice here, and oh, that didn't work either. I can hear myself. We can hear you, Cynthia. <laughs> yes, definitely. What I can I'm, hear you very well. I'm, what I'm wondering, I'm, we're, we're, I'm mulling things over because we're digging into improving our requirements felt and management process. Part of this incorporating our internal requirements and fully validating the requirements so we know it's something that that we've at least looked like which would be kind of elements on this checklist for our internally driven stuff anyway and so I'm wondering if it's a matter of prioritizing because of impact is that what you were trying to say with your slides back there in fact I would like you I, I'm not sure if I first of all I, I'll address your point but I'll tell you what I understand I think the key thing is how we design this checklist. So uh -huh. we need to analyze existing data from production. We need to determine root causes. And based on this, we design the checklist. And then we give ourselves the opportunity to apply this checklist on each request. And we call this an operating pattern. We'll operate now different way in doing the design by incorporating the checklist in our way of work to introduce new level of behaviors that haven't been there before. Because often due to the lack of discipline, 
people tended to do um, inaccurate assumptions, which lead to errors propagating to, to production, or due to uh, lack of required teamwork with team two and team three. In our cases here, if you can recall, when you introduce the checklist, team two and team three were so critical to the success. Uh, you, you need to have a manager support, as I mentioned, because manager, in fact, manager will be talking like me. He will be the coach. He will ask them about the checklist, whether the checklist was created based on thorough understanding of the current condition, how this will be the operating pattern, uh, ask them about the achieved by date. There are so many uh, bits and pieces here need to get together to make this happen. Okay. I think it's a matter of just uh, trying to have speed, um, but still trying to capture all of the needs in a brand new design. So that when we do this many, many point, of please. them, we don't, yeah, we don't uh, propagate, you know, continued problem, uh, problem um, sorry, quality issues and cost issues and that sort of thing, which eats your profits. So anyway, it's interesting right. perspective what you have here. I think also context is very important here. Um, honestly speaking, uh, this team work with um, vendors and they don't have many uh, enough control about many of the things which can uh, affect how they can influence uh, their quality and influence the satisfaction of the customer. Uh, they work with the cut solution. They have extensive interfaces with many teams. Many of them are mainframe. So they have less, comp less control. If the team was small, autonomous, can do it on their own. No, they are not. They need coordination and teamwork with other team was, was important. And we've got um, a strong program management culture that helps with that. But I think also the functional leaders, our functional managers need to um, provide uh, additional coaching, I think, you know, we need to erase that. Skills. Right, exactly. Manager as a coach is a prerequisite for this to happen. This uh, scientific thing, uh, mindset, if you look at Gallup here, what they recommended here, they wrote a book, see, oh yeah, this one, this is a book, which I uh, highly recommended. It. it is in the reference list also, on the list of reference. Yeah, and they talk about this with data and with deeper analysis about how critical this could be. Thank you for that. I bet our teams would be interested. Yeah, it, I, I put the references here in, I guess, in one slide it's here. It's you can. It's definitely, yeah. it's definitely one of our our leader principles, but it's uh, not always easy to execute. Can you repeat this again, please? Thank you. This will be in the slides, correct? Yeah, yeah. It is here. It's uh, number three, yeah. In fact, one, one thing here, I think, Selby was talking about velocity to reveal and solve the problem is only with a coaching manager. Yeah. Yeah. So can you clarify a little bit for me, please, Selby? Okay, not sure if it's still on the call. Any more questions here? I'm not seeing any more questions come through. 